Welcome back to another episode of Card Talk, a podcast where we spend just a little bit of time talking about cards from Lord of the Rings, the card game. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Ted Bannock, and I honor talking about cards. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I'm honored to talk about cards. You know, that would have been better. <laughs> so, cut that. Cut it. Cut that. 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 Cut it. Okay. Start it. We'll, Start it over. We'll, and then okay. we'll... <laughs> You ready? <laughs> okay. No, I was just teasing. That was a two week weekend. Oh, 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 oh. I was, I was going to start over. <laughs> you got me on my guard here, Ted. I have, to, <laughs> I have to guard against whether you're being serious or not serious. Ah, uh, no, it's fine. We'll just keep, uh, we'll just keep going. We got a great episode for you, everybody. It's going to be, it's going to be, I'm going to get on it. I'm going to get, we're going to get on it. We're going to get on the show. That's what we're going to okay. do. Thanks that's for joining what, us. That's how we're, that's how we're rolling. So mm-hmm. everybody who uh, is out there, uh, we do have a Patreon. Make sure you join if you can. Um, helps pay for hosting fees and swag and all this stuff. The swag deadline for this year has passed, but uh, definitely helps uh keep the blog alive keep the pod alive and all that stuff um we also have a um a blog uh so if you are interested in reading about the cards instead of reading or listening or watching or whatever it else we have here you can see what matt has over at the blog and that's at cardtalk2018.com so ted hey hey what card are we doing today? Today we're doing Honor Guard. Honor Guard. <laughs> Honor Guard. From Isn't that the... what happens when you go and like um, attack a female? She's Honor Guard. On her guard. I, yeah. I, 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 I mean, that would be anybody, right? They would be, on. I guess, on her guard. Right. I see where we're going with that. Yep, 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 yep. Honor Guard is, hey, we had two. We actually... Do we need to start the show over again? <laughs> Yeah, cut, cut that, cut all that out. Okay. That's fine. We'll fix it in editing. Right. Uh, so we're doing Honor Guard, and it's from the Waste of Airdor pack, which actually came out the last show we did, was yeah. also from the Waste of Air. So two cards in a row from the same pack that doesn't happen too often. Uh, it's Honor Guard. He's the two cost tactics ally who has zero willpower, zero attack, one defense, three hit points. He is traded Gondor and Warrior with a text of response. Exhaust Honor Guard to cancel one point of damage just dealt to a character. He additionally has a Valor response, which um, in case you're not familiar with Valor, it's when you have a threat threshold of 40 or higher. Exhaust and discard Honor Guard to cancel up to five points of damage just dealt to a character. Yeah. Have you ever triggered its valor response, Ted? I have. Uh, oh, yeah? Because five five damage is enough to... I mean, that's it's a lot. That's like the whole health point pool of a hero. Um, and he, he's so flexible that sometimes you plan on canceling. You're like, okay, I'll keep him standing, and I'm going to have him cancel one damage from an undefended attack. And that one damage chains into, you know, a second attack from the enemy or, uh, you know, more shadow cards build up. So all of a sudden this unexpected damage can occur and you're like, well, now I'm going to throw him away to stop a hero from dying, which is good. But I figured I'd give you a little bit of a shout out, uh, this guy being a Gondor guy. So in my Bond of Saga Ship deck, I actually have four Gondor characters. I have two Wardens of Healing and two Honor Guards. And so, you know, if I were playing the Citadel Custodian, that Citadel Custodian would be reduced (laughs) reduced by four down to one. Right. You know, but not a lot of space in that, in the uh, Bond of Saga Ship deck. So nonetheless, um, I mean, but you're reducing the cost of somebody else's Citadel Custodian. I am. Just saying. But they can do that on their own. Yeah, um, but you're helping. Just saying. Check out the episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
But I will say that primarily I'm using this guy for his response to cancel the point of damage. Um, and I'm also using him as a defender. Um, the one defense and three hit points isn't, uh, it's not great, but it's good, you know, good enough. Yeah. And coupled with a warden of healing, you know, I can heal up Sam or Treebeard and then heal up the honor guard with him, you know, like it becomes one of those things that, that happens, um, especially with the hobbits because they have so few hit points, you know, you can cancel a point of archery, a point of direct damage that's released, you know, during the, during the treachery, you know, if you get a treachery or you get a point of, you know, the, the get a shadow that's deal one damage, to the defending character, you know, like there's a lot of, what it does is it gives you a lot of options, and that's what you need when you're building kind of a general deck to take through a lot of different places. So, you know, it gives yeah. you, you know, if you don't want to bring healing or you're limited in deck space to, you know, like like the bond of bond of friendship deck does, this gives you another option to um, not to heal, but to just cancel the damage. So, um, and that's good. And I. A rules clarification for everybody out there that I actually know is that, you know, let's say you're playing um, Sam. Sam has three hit points. He's got two damage on him already. Sam takes one damage and is going to die. You can exhaust the honor guard and it cancels that point of damage so that it doesn't exist and Sam doesn't die it's like the healing always happens as an action and so you can't heal your character before the damage is dealt here the damage can, is canceled and you can prevent a hero it doesn't have to be sam it could be any hero from dying if it's just one extra hit point now if you're 10 hit points over whatever then whatever but it's not a and it's a character too so like tree beard um Guai here, you know, like eagles, like whatever, whatever big guy you don't want to lose, this guy can really help you out. Yeah, and uh, I'll mention in multiplayer, it's not character you control. So if if David has one of these on his side of the board, and I'm defending against one of my own attacks, uh, David could exhaust his honor guard to prevent damage my defending character would take. Right. Yeah, and I mean. I could go on and on about this guy, but Ted, what's your what's your take on the honor guard? He is certainly an honorable mention. Um, he's up there. He's he's a great card. Damage mitigation is as good as healing. Um, sometimes you know better so, and he has this extra ability to just like cancel up to five when you are in valor, which happens in plenty of games he tends to be you know he can soak up two archery by himself and he can soak up one archery every single turn by just canceling a point of archery right. and he can heal himself or he can prevent it from himself anyways too you could you could assign <laughs> him a point of damage via archery and then exhaust him to cancel you could assign that point. Him three points of archery and exhaust him to cancel one so he has to cancel two. one yeah absolutely yep. Um, he's, he's Gondor and warrior traded. So, you know, if you're playing a, a Gondor, uh, deck, he can get boosted by some of those things, even though he's got poor stats to begin with and you don't use them for that. You, you can boost his attack up to, up to one <laughs> with leadership hero Boromir who boosts all Gondor allies. Um, additionally, he works pretty well with tactics, uh, Prince Imrahil because he shares two traits with him. So you could pay the resource, pull him out of the deck and then hey you know if you're in valor that's where you get the most value because then you could cancel up to five points of damage um or you could just chump block with him so he kind of has some some room there but even aside from those factors if i'm running a tactics deck that has two tactics heroes i'll even just one i usually include two to three copies of him because damage like i said damage mitigation is a great substitute in place of direct healing so especially in a mono tactics deck i will put in as much damage mitigation as i can which means three copies of honor honor guard yeah i mean and i think that that gets to the crux of of what you got if you can't put healing or you need to supplement healing somehow 
damage cancellation works. We did a whole bunch of healing cards last year, mm-hmm. you know, and we talked about the honor guard a ton. We never because it's a great, it's a great replace. Functionally, they're different, right? Canceling versus healing, and I tried to outline that a little bit in in the use case where you know you can you can actually save a hero from dying by canceling damage, but you can't save a hero from die, dying by healing damage. So I mean that's the that's functionally the difference. Um, but this guy is good. There's times when I feel bad that I'm exhausting him to cancel the point of damage because he's, he's a stout defender in and of himself. So, (laughs) you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. And so he goes into just about any, deck that you have access so to many tactics. decks because it's yeah. like unless you're not planning on taking damage which is like never because <laughs> right. it's like a core mechanic of the game <laughs> right you're probably gonna have damage coming at you and he helps solve that problem by mitigating it and and it, yep. cause his response is so it's a response it's very flexible to all the situations you named right. archery damage from attacks damage from treacheries right you know the main so- like the main sources they're going to come from shadow cards shadow card damage yeah and i think that this guy also can be put into play with lothereal cuz lothereal puts into play as long as they share a trait lothereal's gondor uh you you could you could I guess it's just not very strong because i think i think lothereal commits them to the quest right away so he would be exhausted and committed right if i remember lethereal correctly no that's right a ton okay i'm not saying you would want to do it i'm saying you (laughs) You could could do do it it. (laughs) right (laughs) you know but uh uh there was one other oh okay so while we're on the point of uh rules clarific while we're on the point of non-bows right (laughs) i'd say it's kind of a non-bow kind of a miss there um he ties into i can only think of one specific example so sometimes you have to take damage to pay for a cost of something and the only thing i can really think of is hero urken brand Brand. yep who has the ability to pay uh he has an ability it's a response to take one damage to cancel the effects of a shadow card in which he is the active defender and it's been ruled that that is a cost to a card. It's like paying resources. You're taking damage to pay for the cost of the effect. And if you, you would think, oh, I'm going to exhaust honor guard to reduce that damage and to still cancel the shadow card. That's unfortunately not the case. If you, if you mitigate the damage from hero or brand, you also prevent paying the cost, which then cancels the effect. Right. You have to actually pay the cost. You have to pay the other. The other one that I can think of is Quick Beam Ally, where you have to pay one to ready him when he comes into play. Uh, you have to damage him to ready him. Oh, give him uh, one damage to ready, and you can't when he can't enter. When he enters play, play. Damn it. Yeah, so I would say that's along the same lines. If it's you, the if same you thing. You can't cancel do that. it. He would not ready. Right, because you're canceling the damage. Right. So, so a couple. And then that would be an that'd be even worse because you would cancel the one and and quick beam would still not ready and the honor guard would now be exhausted yeah so that's... <laughs> yeah i guess you would take the damage off of quick beam though still yeah but that's what you would have if you just didn't do that anyways right you better off yeah um <laughs> but uh so just a, a great thing great mention because i didn't think of quick beam so so watch out for those things when you're playing with this guy um a a point of rules clarification where he does work is damage mitigation works uh with hero bayorn Mm -hmm. hero bayorn is immune to player card effects so you cannot heal him he can't be healed but a card effect like honor guard actually targets the damage Right. Not the hero. So honor guard is so if Bjorn was gonna take two points of damage, you can honor guard if you had two honor guards, you could honor guard both. Or with one, you could you could cancel that one damage because you're not targeting the hero, you're targeting the, the damage, and there's a right. distinction there. Right. And so the the moral of the story is 
use this guy in a hero Bayorn deck. Yeah. You get three of them out, you you know, you can definitely keep Bayorn healthy and happy. Uh yeah, definitely three of like every Bayorn deck, I'm like three hundred yards. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 a it's a good feeling too, because then you get more you get way more mileage out of him and they're in the same sphere. Right. So it's wonderful. Yeah, I mean just thinking about this card, this card, while Gondor, while Warrior, doesn't have to go into a Gondor deck, doesn't have to go into Warrior deck, although there's the Immerhill thing, there's the, you know, the Gondor th- thing, you know, mm-hmm. Hero Boromir falls, he, Tactics Hero Boromir, um, you know, is is a great target for this guy, you know, like, but they, it doesn't have to be. No, those so much decks. more utility. You can, like, I put him in the Bond of saga ship hobbit deck because uh, you know, those see, hobbits are protecting. very fragile right you know like so to cancel one point of damage you know you're canceling 50 percent of the hit points 50 percent of the damage that those hobbits can take you know and so it makes it real yes yeah uh, yeah you know, like it makes it real good to do that you know and i haven't gotten i i asked you at the top of the show whether you used the valor response i have not used the valor response but that doesn't mean that I maybe should have at one point or maybe, you know, because I just, again, playing the types of decks that I play, I typically am not playing high threat decks. And so that Valor response sometimes gets forgotten, right? So at least by me. Um, But, you know, when I'm playing the, maybe when I'm playing Mount Doom, I can remind myself that that guy can basically cause some good stuff to happen yeah (laughs) a lot of people play his first effect is like the main reason you play him but his second effect just like if he didn't have that second effect he would still be good i would still play him for For two two, resources two and tactics like and yep um you can also you know he's an ally too so that means you can you can reduce his cost with hirgan you know, hero here gun who lets you play allies at a reduced cost. Like just, it's just crazy. Yeah. Um, how, how great this ally is. Yeah. And, and he can be, this is one of those where you could boost him and it would be worth it. You know, you give him a couple extra hit points with Squire's helm. Now he's a, a good defender, uh, even better defender. You could give him, you he know, could have a the, Raymond uh, he of could war. Raymond of war. He could and that would have... give him two defense and four hit points, which is not right. too shabby. Right. And uh, gives him some attack back too. like, you know, not that that's going to happen, but you know, it, you could round shield, you know, there's, there's lots of options here because this guy's going to stick around um, a little bit. And, you know, yes, you may exhaust him to cancel the point of damage, but there are turns when you're playing where you don't cancel the point of damage and you have a ready honor guard, you know, so why not use him as a defender or why not have that flexibility there? It's not maybe the best play, but it's a legitimate play if you're looking for something that's going on, right? Yeah. Yeah, yep. I think that no. this guy makes a lot of contract decks. You know, he's obviously not going to go into a, a Three Hunters deck or a Fellowship deck, but, you know, you can right. put him into the the Council, Council of the Wise You can deck. have one copy. Yep. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I would definitely do it there, you Absolutely. know, as long as you have the tactics. You know, yep. it's just, you know, you're looking for ways to heal and mitigate damage, and that's the that's the way to do it. So, you know, but does he particularly combo? Yeah, all those places that you went, but he's good in just about every deck, I think. Yeah, I love to see him on the table too for multiplayer because mm-hmm. again, you're you're canceling damage uh, from any any character. So the more he's on the table, it's like, oh, great! I can, you know, you can kind of ask another player like, oh, can I, can I have a safety net? Like, do you mind right. if I do a? You can you can make some more risky plays. Right, which people I, I don't think register. Like you right. can block it. Att- we're like, oh, I only have two defense against a six attack. Well, if he gets plus one, like I have a a plan how to handle that. Right, that's what I was gonna say. Like the shadow, the shadow is the big, you know, mystery and yeah. combat. So it makes um, it nice to be able to. He he can cancel a point of damage off of Spirit Baragond. Right, his abilities. <laughs> right. If he takes no damage, mm-hmm. re- if you take no damage, reduce your threat. So if you're, 
had that one extra point of damage, you can cancel. Like it's just it's endless. We could keep and going. Then Spirit Barrel on the show about this. You know, lowers your threat and does all that good stuff, right? So like all yeah, there's stuff. there's there's all sorts of reasons to include the honor guard. Yeah. This card is just functionally good. <laughs> like yeah. it's just a good card, you know. I didn't realize he's by one of my favorite artists, actually. I was about to talk about that, but before we talk <laughs> about the art, can we talk about what this represents in the literature? I don't know if you know do you know I what mean, the honor guard was? Uh I'm not familiar, but I'm sure there's a whole thing about them. Yeah, you can see it in the background. So the there was an honor guard set to defend the white tree of Gondor. Right? Uh, so which, the white tree you know, came from the first age when you know when the when the trees were hewn and you know like like and Numenor was found and then they went up and I forget who it was. I should know as a Tolkien a geek, but uh, you know, some guy rescued uh, like the the seedling and came back. And so, like the honor guard was set around the white tree of Gondor to, you know, to look for the return of the king. And so, when the when the king would return, the white tree would bloom. It's portrayed really nicely in the in the movies. Um, uh, the honor guard sitting there. This particular art if i'm transition to the art now is interesting because it's showing like the honor guard is like kind of defending and attacking where i i always envisioned the honor guard to be more of a you know like um the person that is at the tomb of the unknown soldier <laughs> you know like not really ready to go into combat and this guy looks like he's ready to you know chuck his spear maybe that's just a banner i don't know i'd have to see what the full art looks like but i think that this art is phenomenal it kind of shows everything that the honor guard does and so and ted who is this by and tell me if you uh it. yeah it is it, it is by uh owen william uh weber and uh he's done a couple other gondor pieces um and he's he, i didn't actually realize uh that he did this piece actually right off the bat but uh yeah it's it's got the the white tree there portrayed uh very nicely and got some different light effects and he's got the kind of standard gondor armor with that that's you know wing, winged helm that's become sort of uh known to the gondor folk um so there's even yeah. a card right we've raven winged helm but yeah that yeah, does so. kind of the similar thing as the right isn't that uh yeah the raven winged helm uh yeah that it's an ability that it's a car attachment that go on sentinel heroes that lets you cancel a point of damage to yep. them yep so so it kind of turns it into an honor guard right mm, <laughs> it's kind of funny. yes well should we ring the honor guard yes we shall yes you want to have shall. the honors good sir sure so for any <laughs> Oh, I'm always always nervous around you, Ted. I'm always on my guard. I'll go first if you want me to. No, well, I gotta uh, I gotta intro the the whole ring thing, right? And so, unless you know the the ring intro, uh, no, go for it. Good stuff. Okay. <laughs> so you know, so for anybody who doesn't know or may have forgotten, we have a highly scientific and arbitrary system where we ring a card on a scale from one to ten, where one is the one card to rule them all, or the best card in the game, or one of the best cards in the game and a 10 is the card that we throw back into the firing chasm from whence it came. So Ted, what did you say? You wanted to go first or are you letting me go first? I want to go first, even though I told you to go first. Okay, uh, I'm going to give this guy a two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Cause he's got so much utility to cancel damage and it's like what quest doesn't have damage, you know, like none that I can, think of um there's some scenarios where damage is more heavy right like they're they're the challenge of that quest is to deal with more damage than normal and he's definitely needed there but uh he gives you so many flexible options and his effect is universal so uh, i get i give him a two it's funny because when i look at cards i uh i usually ring them based on how they inspire me but this card like some of the other cards that we've talked about recently like this card just gets slotted into a whole bunch of decks right and i can't ignore that you know a couple episodes ago we talked about build a pony that just always gets slotted into like one deck but this card gets slotted into 
so many decks. It's just so good. It's versatile. It does a lot of different things. Not a lot of different. It does a couple of different things, which is always great in a card, especially playing solo. It you does one card- thing really good. Stop well, damage. It it defends. It defends too. But, you can't right. argue that it's that it's uh you know yep. not a good defender. I think it is a good defender. I agree. So you know like so it does a couple of things really good, which is what you want when you're a solo player. Is you want cards that can do a couple of different things, you know, and then that valor response is just kind of like gravy on the top of it, you know. So you can just so so in this case I can't ignore. So, so does the honor guard inspire? Like when I open up my binder and I look at the honor guard, am I inspired to build a deck? No, but I will tell you that whenever I put a deck together the honor guard is on my if i have a tactics hero just even one tactics hero i'm looking at the honor guard to do some work for me so with that i think i have to agree i think that this card is just that good and i have to give it a two because it's just that good it like overpowers my my need to be inspired by it that it's just going to always go into a deck for the most part unless like it's, I don't want to say it's a staple. It's not like a staple like Test of Will is, but it's close in terms of ally staples. So that's what I have to say about that. So I yeah. say two. So, well, there we have it. We're talking about the Honor Guard. And remember, everybody, we do have a Patreon. If you uh, like what you hear or you want to help support the blog or help support us, feel free to join us at patreon.com slash cardtalk2018. And don't forget to check out the blog at cardtalk2018.com and read all about the reviews and all the back reviews that we have. And check out the theatrical campaign where I insert clips of the movies into the campaign play. It's uh, It's been a lot of fun. So... There you have it, everybody. We'll see you next week and have a great day. Do you love the content? Here's what you can do to stay connected. Become a patron. The money collected through Patreon goes into keeping the lights on here at the podcast. We love our patrons and you can join at many different levels. Visit patreon.com slash card talk 2018. You can subscribe to us, whether you're watching our YouTube channel or you're listening to us in your favorite podcatcher. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications of all our new episodes. Didn't know we were an audio podcast? Find us by searching Card Talk to get access to our 120 plus regular episodes. Didn't know we were a video channel? Find us by searching Card Talk L O T R L C G on YouTube. And there you can find not only our regular episodes, but you can find our bonus playthroughs and other content related to the game. Want to get a hold of Ted, Grant, or myself? Feel free to email the podcast at cardtalk2018 at gmail.com.